It's clear that EVs are the future. Tesla just reported their 2021 Q1 numbers and they delivered more vehicles than they have ever delivered in the past. With so many people transitioning to electric vehicles, it leaves one very common question. As we look at fundamentally changing how we've always traveled, putting gasoline into your vehicle to now charging your vehicle, most people looking at electric vehicles have the same question. How exactly do you charge your vehicle and what's involved? And it's important to explain and educate others on this. That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. How do you charge your electric vehicle, whether it be a Tesla or other brand, and what exactly it means, how fast is it, and everything under that. So let's get started. There are essentially three levels of charging. The first is level one. It's your most common charging infrastructure. It's the plug that you find in your home and every EV comes with this charging capability. It's included in your vehicle. In my Tesla, it was included. I could easily just plug into the wall and I can charge my vehicle. It's super simple. It's also the slowest form of charging. It's called trickle charging, and it's using your 120 volt outlet found in your house. This can range with charging power anywhere from one to about two kilowatts. Now that means a charge in about 17 hours. So it's extremely slow. In my Tesla, that's about three miles per hour. So not the most ideal, but if you're not driving much every day, you could get away with this. The other really handy thing about the trickle charge or the standard outlet is you can plug in anywhere. So if you get stranded, finding this outlet is a little bit more common than finding any other outlet. So it's the most common, it comes in your vehicle and it's very easy to charge. Now moving up from that to add to convenience and efficiency, you're gonna wanna look at what's called level two charging. Now level two charging has charging power anywhere from three to about 20 kilowatts. This is usually found with a 240 volt outlet. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. Number one, you can install this in your house by hiring an electrician to run a, a specific line in your house, but level two chargers can also be found in the wild, specifically at establishments that you may shop at, i.e. Target. Target typically has outside some charge point chargers from what I've seen. And charge point chargers can sometimes partner with the place of business to offer some amount of charging time for free, 30 minutes or an hour as a thank you for shopping. And it allows you to just kind of top off while you're shopping or doing what you would normally do. Level two chargers can also be found at hotels that are covered by the hotel, i.e. a hotel could install Tesla's wall chargers that you can install at home and offer it to its guests while they're spending the night there so that they that way they can get a full charge overnight. It's nice and it's convenient, but it's not the solution if you're road tripping. This is good for an overnight charge. It essentially allows you to get a full charge in about eight hours. That's two times faster than the trickle charge, the level one charging found in level two charging. Now both level one and level two are AC charging. But when we come to road tripping, where we have to travel long distances, we want to charge in the shortest amount of time as possible. This is where a level three charging comes in. This is the fast DC charging. Here's where we're gonna see charging power anywhere from 120 kilowatts all the way up to 250 kilowatts. That means a full charge in about 30 minutes. This is a whole lot faster than what we're seeing in level one and in level two, and it's specifically used for road tripping. It allows you to charge fast and get back on the road. Now with level three, Tesla's got their supercharging network, which spans worldwide, but there are other companies, i.e. EVgo or Electrify America that offer charging options to non-Tesla electric vehicles. Now with all of these, there is a range on level three. You can be as low as 120 kilowatts or you can be as high as 250 kilowatts. The higher means the faster the charge. But how do you figure out 
what charge rate you're going to get. On a Tesla, right on the touch screen, you can click on a supercharger and see what the charging rate is at that specific supercharger. Tesla actually has three different types of superchargers. One is called the Urban Supercharger. They're smaller and shorter and offer about 72 kilowatts. The second is their V2 superchargers. It's their most common superchargers. And these are about 150 kilowatts, which equates to about 500 miles per hour at its peak. Now, the key thing to keep in mind with V2 superchargers and how you can tell a V2 apart from a V3 is that V2 superchargers are labeled at the bottom of every supercharger. They'll have a number and then a letter. And the reason for that is because these superchargers are shared. So if you are on a number and a letter and there's not someone on the adjacent letter, you're gonna get the maximum speed. But as soon as someone pulls up next to you and plugs in, you're gonna see that speed drop. In my case, I saw a drop from 500 miles per hour charging to about 300. So keep that in mind in charging etiquette to keep the space in between vehicles unless absolutely necessary. If there's no more spaces involved, it's understood that you're gonna have to share a spot. Now, lastly, with a Tesla, there's their V3 superchargers. These are superchargers that support up to 250 kilowatts, which equates to about a thousand miles per hour. Now, are you gonna see that thousand miles per hour the entire time you're charging? No, you're gonna see that at its peak. That means when you arrive at a charging station, the lower your state of charge, i.e. if you have five miles left on your pack, you're gonna get pumped with the most amount of range as quickly as possible, which will result at a Tesla charger at a thousand miles per hour initially for the first maybe five, 10 minutes, and then you'll see it taper off as you get more juice in your battery pack. Now, V3 superchargers, you can tell because they won't have the number letter sequence at the bottom of the stalls. The charging cable is a little bit thinner. Sometimes they have a 250 kilowatt tag on the top of them, but most importantly, right from the touchscreen, you can verify that it supports 250 kilowatts. Now for non-Tesla chargers, you'll need to reference the screen. At EVgo, on the screen, it'll tell you what kilowatts is supported at that charging station. You'll also need to know how many kilowatts your specific electric vehicle supports, so be sure to look into that. Obviously, the higher it supports, the faster charging you're gonna see, and when road tripping, that's an important factor to know how fast you can charge and get on the road. At Tesla's V3 superchargers, you can charge your entire battery pack in about 30 minutes. It's enough time to use the bathroom, grab something to eat, and get back in your car or catch up on a show on Netflix. And super convenient, so keep that in mind. Now with V3, there's, of course, you've got your Teslas, you've got EVgo, you've got Electrify America, and so many more. And then we talked about level two chargers. There's so many of those scattered all throughout the United States and the world but what's the best way to see all of this? Well, for myself, in the Tesla, all the superchargers are located on the screen. All the urban chargers, all the V2, all the V3, and all the destination level two chargers are indicated on the screen. But those are only Tesla chargers. There are apps and websites like PlugShare is a great, amazing app that helps you to identify and locate all sorts of chargers, whether it be Tesla or non-Tesla chargers all over the place. There's also a better route planner, which is a great tool to use to plan out your trip from destination A to destination B, what chargers are available there. It also takes into account wind and weather and tire size and vehicle make and model to better estimate what your range and where you should stop is going to be like. So if you're planning on getting your electric vehicle, hopefully the knowledge that I shared with you on today's video was super helpful. Be sure to take a look at a better route planner and plug share to understand more about the charging infrastructure that works best for you before purchasing. And hopefully that was useful. If it was, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like that. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.